And now it turns out there were like two million people who came from Europe during that time. And they landed at JFK, they landed at Newark Airport, some went to Chicago, that's where the flights go. And then they just mixed into society and then you have New York which is one of the most dense communities in the country and the virus took off. Nobody said it was coming from Europe, right? We didn't, people, visitors from Europe were, walked right through the airport. Nobody said to New Yorkers, be careful if you're just uh, with somebody who came from Italy, uh, be careful, they may have the virus. Nobody said that. So it was totally new. I can't speak to the East Coast strain versus the West Coast strain. Uh, on the antibodies, there was an initial thought that if you had gotten the virus and you had the antibodies, that you would be immune to another infection. I think that's now being questioned, but again, you're beyond my pay grade. Dr. Sure. Zucker, would you Th like to? Thank you, Governor. So what the CDC is doing and, uh, and others are, are looking at is the genetic fingerprinting of this virus to try to figure out the differences between whether it's uh, those who came from China and from Italy. Uh, and unfortunately, all the information is not out yet about uh, how this, uh, has, whether it's mutated, what's the difference of these viruses, uh, and the uh, severity of the virus as to whether uh, one strain would be worse than another. Uh, regarding the antibody issue, um, as the government said, initially the feeling was that one has antibodies, they should be protected. But we, we continue to learn more about this virus every day. And that's one of the things we're going to learn more about is the protection from uh, when you have antibodies and what that means. And also for how long uh, that protection would last. Uh, um, if one is protected from that. So it is a great question, and it's hard to give you an answer at this point right now because there's still more research to do. Yeah. And by the way, as I mentioned before, they're not talking today. I spoke to someone from Illinois. They, they think the virus may have come last December or November. So they're looking at autopsy reports to see if it should have been a cause of death last year, which to me is just a wake-up call that you know, we think we know what we know, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, look at all the revisions that are now going on about all the facts that we thought we knew, January, February, March. Governor, I want to ask about social distancing. Well, Island does not seem close to meeting all the necessary criteria, even lagging behind the city on one key data point. Why is that? And along with that, the contact tracing seems to be a big challenge. And yesterday, the Nassau County Executive said that there's going to be the software for the contact tracing system. Is it going to be online for four weeks? What role does that play in, in reopening? Yeah. The, one of the new th systems that we have to develop here is everybody talks about test, trace, isolate. We have to do thousands of tests. By the way, we've already done one million tests in this state. This state has brought testing online faster than any state in the country. And we now do more tests per capita than any country on the globe in New York. So we've been very aggressive and successful at bringing testing online. But we have to have testing in every region, Long Island, New York City, upstate, different regions upstate. And then an army of tracers, you're talking about thousands of tracers who take every positive, call up every positive, who did you go to dinner with, who did you, uh, whatever. And then isolate those people and you have to have facilities to isolate people who can't be isolated. Uh, some people can't be isolated at home. So that has to be in place in every region. We are working with regions to get that up and running, but you have to have you have to have the virus on the decline, and then you have to have a way to monitor that virus, and that's testing and tracing. I don't know about the uh, county's software system. I don't know if Jim knows. We spoke, I spoke to the county executive last night, and that is one issue that we're working with the county on is the testing and tracing. The other piece that I think you referred to was the gross hospitalizations, new people coming in the door, which is a sort of concern of new infections. The data that the governor mentioned today, where are people coming from, what are their demographic information, who are they, will help isolate and target better for people in regions to say, here's a hot spot zone to get that infection rate down. So this will help Long Island and other regions 
target better where the infections are coming from to lower that overall infection rate, which will help in the reopening process as we go forward. And that's what Michael Bloomberg is helping us with, putting together this tracing, testing program. Again, it's never been done before on this scale. We have to do it now. And then we actually want to keep it institutionalized because I don't believe this is the last time that we're going to go through this. I think this is part of the overall new normal. You know, we're seeing storms we never saw before. We're seeing changes in the environment, changes in weather patterns. And I think this is going to be, it's the first real public health emergency that we've had on this scale. But uh, I, I would not believe that this is the last time we go through it. So I think learn the lessons and institutionalize it. Let's take one more. Governor, I, I wanted to ask about social distancing. Uh, there have been critics in the city that are saying that lower income and minority neighborhoods are having tougher enforcement than upper or more affluent neighborhoods or even in Central Park. What would you comment on that? Yeah, social distancing. Not in this city, because we're on Long Island here, but uh, in the, let's call it in the city. Uh, in the city, when you're on Long Island, the city is New York City, although there are many cities in the state. Uh, the social distancing is important. Uh, the enforcement of social distancing and wearing a mask is left up to the local governments, and the local governments have discretion on how to enforce it. Uh, and obviously, it should, it should be enforced in a non-discriminatory, non-selective way. Uh, but I think it's important that it is important that people socially distance. It's not, I think. I know it's important that people socially distance. I know it's important that people wear a mask. I know uh, masks are now even believed to be more important by healthcare experts than they initially were, uh, that they can be more effective. And it is so easy, relatively, in the scope of things, to wear the mask. I mean, look. We're at Northwell. Look at what the people here at Northwell just went through for the past two months to save lives. And we're asking people wear a mask so you don't spread the infection. Compared to what people have gone through, you don't want to wear a mask? No, that's not who we are. It's not what we are. We're part of a society. We understand we're responsible one for another. Wear the mask. I don't even have a good-looking mask, and I wear it. I have this very plain, boring, white, ugly mask. But with this face, it doesn't make a difference. Thank you very much, guys.